Hey guys, it's the Awesome Cast number 89. We're all in studio. Well, I mean, the people are here are in studio. My hair's still doing funny things with this headphones. But I'm Mike Sorg here in uh, in the studios here in Pittsburgh, PA. And with me, joining me uh, fresh off the weekend, the big weekend, Chachi of ChachiPlays.com. Hi, Hi, guys. Hey. I'm alive. You are alive. Very much so. Good to see you. Yes. Bright okay. eyes, bright eyed and bushy tailed. Well, yeah. Considering I was at work today. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, that's good. That's yeah. good. So how'd you survive the weekend? It was actually easier this year. It was. Yeah. I didn't have as much problems as last year. Yeah. Uh, to explain? Well, last year, or not, la- yeah, last year, um, it was hard keeping the energy up with walls in the uh, schedule and with certain games Mm -hmm. and i didn't find nascar yeah i didn't find myself having that problem this week or this year because we pretty much filled the schedule we had like what five slots open and that was about it yeah yeah so actually it was four because we filled the one at last minute yeah that voice is missy sword she's the maker of the noms ah it says there, maker of the noms there it is joining us is this your first time down here on this show i think officially yes i my I, noms I have like made an appearance but i don't think i have <laughs> well you join us this week rob is off on uh I, I, he, I think he's keeping something from exploding so uh we're giving him the week off here missy's joining us because it's valentine's day and we get to spend it together yay! yay so uh but uh yeah we're all as you can see by our hoodies all coming off at chachi plays this past weekend so, yes. um, but we survived, you know, what was the goal or what, well, what, how did we do? The goal was $3,000 and we raised $3,800. Excellent. So we Excellent. more than surpassed, sur- surpassed, yes, yeah, surpassed our goal Excellent. and, uh, then some, and we're looking forward to next year now already. Yeah. Um, so, uh, hey, this is the Austin Cast, the show where we uh, talk about tech, what's going on in the uh, in, online and everything like that, whatever we come up with here. Um, and uh, you can uh, chime in by hitting us up at uh, awesomecast.com, of course. Check out all the past episodes and uh, people we've interviewed with uh, over time. Uh, some startups, some people doing some really cool stuff. Hey, thanks. Monster Haiku last week. Uh, there's an evening with PodCamp that's going to be coming up here in the next couple of days. So keep an eye on that, podcamppittsburgh.com. Yes. Um, really good talk with them on top of what we, we talked about last week. Also, yes. drop an email to contact at awesomecast.com and check our Twitter at awesomecast. Uh, and uh, we're also on Facebook and Google Plus if you want to chime in there. Like a few people had this week, Chachi. We're getting some uh, some feedback here. Are we? Yes, we are. We uh, are. Yes, we are. We you, are. you see it? I you do. see it? There it is. Uh, we were talking last week about the Super Bowl ads, right, Josh? Yes. And um, about how they were pulling them off of the YouTube. Uh, Matt Weller, otherwise known as Nero of the uh, uh, long past uh, Awful Show, uh, he, he says, uh, I assume it's the music or the other content licensing, other content licensing issues, uh, like you mentioned. It's weird, though, because it seems like uh, it seems to be a YouTube thing, and it's even... Even then, it's selective. Uh, he used to go to adcritic.com to view cool ads from all over the world, but they turned it into a pay site, and everyone stopped going there. Now the domain pushes to creativity-online.com, and they seem to be showing all the ads again for free, though they do make you try to register. Um, so still a mystery, but that, that's a cool uh, kind of alternative site, and I haven't looked much at it here. Uh, but here, here's that site. Oh, if this thing decides it wants to refresh... So um, we'll we'll see if we can get that working there. Um, anywho, oh, and everybody probably just lost us on the wirecast, but we'll be right back. So um, oh, there it is. There's the there's the uh, ad site that he was talking about. So I guess well, that's cool. I, get, I, I I imagine it's for people that uh, are in the ad industry, but uh, that'll be a fun fun one to look back, look uh, site to look at there. Uh, creative creativity onlinecom So there you go. Um, let's see what else you got here. Uh, also, we did post our Neil Gaiman video over at uh, Facebook that was uh, sent to us by Sonic Sonic Screwdriver. And uh, and there's some discussion going on on that over at the Google Plus page if you want to check that out. Um, other stories. We uh, forgot AJ. AJ, I'm, go- I'm coming to it. No, no well, I'm still I'm still in, the, uh, in that part. Uh, Juggalo John 
sent us a uh, a link that Double Fine fans raise over one million dollars, I believe, on Kickstarter. Let me see. Pull us up here again. Um, Oh, he he keeps linking me YouTube's for this, uh, but uh, but yeah, uh, it actually the the first of I think a couple of the first million dollar Kickstarters uh, happened over this past week. Well, let me chime in my two cents on that one. Okay, uh, I think it's pretty awesome that Kickstarter projects were able to raise a million dollars. Um, it's just kind of cool because when Kickstarter first started out, you know, it was smaller based projects and it seems to, you know, for, for them to have reached over a million dollars. That's pretty awesome. Uh, what sort of time frame were we looking at with, with a million dollars? I'm trying to look it up here. Um, I'm, I'm Googling, but, um, I mean, it's gotta be, you know, like double finds a, a pretty, pretty decent studio. So they, they had a lot behind them, a lot of fan base behind them to be able to do something like that. It's not like, uh, and I think it was a text adventure or something. Um, here, it actually crowd. Uh, here's a story here from um, TPM uh, that they've had, they, the websites had their first multi million dollar or, or double million dollar day. So uh, they got a lot of stuff going in there. That's pretty awesome. And uh, so, and, and especially, you know, well, you know, we know Justin Kanaki used Kickstarter for his thing. There's a mm -hmm. Zombies versus uh, Wrestlers Kickstarter that's going on here locally uh, that we've been, you know, kind of keeping an eye on. Um, and, and you know, kind of looking at it as, as options for a lot of projects we've been talking about around here, too. You know, so it, it's it's good to see that if it's bringing in this much money, uh, Kickstarter is definitely meeting a mass appeal that... Uh, you know, people don't feel, you know, iffy about putting money into it at this point, it seems like. Well, it's kind of like, you know, essentially the, the eBay of projects. Mm -hmm. um, you know, you, you list your stuff out there, you give a description of it, and, you know, essentially people bid on being a part of it in some degree. You know, so I, I think that with the technology-based, the, the way that we are as a society right now, I, I think that that actually is a really cool initiative way to do it. Mm -hmm. and, and it's a way you can do that. It is really nice because, you, 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 you know, you, you know that people are, are into the project that you're that you're doing. If you make Yeah, that, absolutely. Make I mean, you, you put the description, you, you people know the interest, what they're doing. You, you know, gauge and, the interest. And they have to be so into especially if it's something like, you know, a movie we're looking at that wants to raise $30,000. You're you going to have a lot of people on board with that. It was like... If you get thirty thirty thousand dollars worth of money out of that, then you have thirty thousand dollars worth of people that you know would have went and bought the DVD, or will go buy the DVD, or see it, or 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 however that comes out. Um, so you've already created your fan base and your awareness right off the bat. True, so. and, and even to that regard, I mean, even if even if it was just a friend of mine that I wasn't necessarily like whole sold on the the project. I mean, the zombie film, eh, I, I could I could take it, I could leave it type of thing. Hmm. Um, but if it's a friend of mine and I, I put toward it, obviously I'm going to go and you know buy the DVD. I'm going to check it out. I'm going to you know be involved with it after the fact, mm -hmm. solely because I'm supporting people that I know. Exactly, exactly. So, well, overall, it's selective funding. Mm -hmm. So instead of stuff that you don't care for getting made, you can go out and scour Kickstarter to find a project that you yourself are behind. Yeah. So, kind of like some people creating their own fundraiser. Yeah, I'm not doing anything. <laughs> <laughs> excellent, excellent. All right, let's see what else we so, got. Uh, AJ sent us a story. Yes, he did. Uh, Yahoo wants to build secret servers in Nevada. <laughs> that we now know about. Yes. Well, they're not really secret. Good, uh, good uh, job, Yahoo. According to Yahoo, or according to Wired, uh, Nebraska is tr offering them tax breaks to Nebraska. put Nebraska. Yes, is offering tax breaks to put in a factory where they would create their build their own servers uh, to run their product. Mm -hmm. And the article says they would build them there and test them elsewhere. And AJ would just like to point out that that further proves that they probably don't have internet in Nebraska. <laughs> so they're trying to bring the internet to Nebraska. They want to. No, they're, they're not. 
They want to build the internet in Nebraska and then export it. Apparently, yeah, they just want to. <laughs> they just want a place to put the servers together. <laughs> just, and then they're going to uh, ship them out. Nobody will notice. Nobody here knows exactly what these things do or what they would be for, and we couldn't even explain it to them at this point. So, yeah. Um, and Nebraska, apparently, the most of the show I've been hearing about the rough deal they've been getting. But, uh, um, yeah, it, well, it's <laughs> Nebraska. I mean, they want to. Basically, this bill would uh, allow other companies to do the same thing, mm-hmm. and they'd get a whole bunch of tax breaks and everything. So Nebraska is almost there. Almost, no. it's almost the Yahoo uh, <laughs> uh, proportions. Yes. So. Well, no, I mean, we all know they have plenty of room to put factories to build servers because mm-hmm. there's nothing there. Yeah. Exactly. And it's okay. all flat, so it's not like they have to build like here in Pittsburgh, where it's very. Mountainous. Yeah, they don't have to. They level don't have to anything. level anything, <laughs> or they don't have to l- learn how to build it into the the side of the mountain. That's true. Exactly. It's just flat. Nebraska. Oh, oh, dare you guys. <laughs> <laughs> oh yeah, and from the chat room, uh, Sonic uh, says maybe they build Amish servers like the heaters. What? Amish building the servers that in, that'd be kind of fun. In Omaha internet for- farm, and of course, Miss Fuzzy Pants. Says Nebraska rules. <laughs> yeah. Anti NAFTA or would Nebraska count as exporting? Good point. Good point. Uh, <laughs> so I think that's all of the real stories I had there from from what got sent to us. Yeah. Uh, but I did throw a question out because I, I, you know, it's a Valentine's episode. We're set. We're stocked up here with our uh, candy hearts. And where's our where's our our hearts heart boxes of candy at? Over there. You guys got them. Well, the, that there. doesn't help. It's supposed to be a visual thing. It's I got chocolate. my candy heart. Why does that have to be a visual hard. thing? But, you, you know, have candy in front of you. There's and, your visual. And, you know, as Missy, as Missy mentioned, <sighs> you there's can eat, your visual. You can eat 40 of these things for one serving. <laughs> Jeez. What? <laughs> you just took out my face, dude. I did not. <laughs> this this is the other thing that Sorg is talking about. Yes. <laughs> So, we get the glare so off keep of it. from the theme. It's Valentine's Day. It is Valentine's Day. So I wanted to ask. I, I asked like if anybody has any kind of like tech, you know, related stories. No, no plastic bags on the set anymore. Sorry. <laughs> no, it's all right. Um, <laughs> but uh, no, no. I, I, I asked if there was any stories like kind of tech related or anything like that. Uh, and I, you know, I thought maybe you know it'd be a good thing to talk about here on Valentine's Day. Um, so I, I did get a couple hits on this. Uh, first of all, uh, uh, Norm, Norm Heelsman of uh, itwixie.com uh, that's been on the show at Mr. Derby. Uh, the first desktop I ever bought was uh, some crappy machine that from Best Buy. It ran Windows ME and I loved it despite the fact that the DVD drive didn't play DVDs and it was so slow. Now I love OS X. So there you go. <laughs> Happy Valentine's Day, Happy Norm. Happy Valentine's Day, Mr. Derby. Um, I got another one from Katie. Uh at K Dutters on the Twitters. Um, she's a girl. I apparently have to clarify that. Uh, yes. she, now, she she let me know over on Gchat. Uh, she's, when she first started using Twitter, her boyfriend at the time equated it to a chat room and was completely against her meeting up with anyone that she met on Twitter. It just it just made her, her laugh uh, when I said that, when I asked about the things, because uh, or when he said that. Because uh, I don't know what what I would have done when if I had listened to him. Because most of the people she's met were are from Twitter. We've had I mean, this conversation like before that the Twitter. majority of our friends, just in general, mm-hmm. are all from Twitter. Yeah. I, and I, ten years ago, I met somebody online. I, I'm going to meet them in real life. People were like, "Oh my god! Oh my god! You're going to die! <laughs> they're, they're a mass murderer, serial killer. They're going to kill you. You're going to die. We're going to see you again." Now it's just like, "Huh? Okay. Mm-hmm. This is cool." Mm-hmm. And, and and you're seeing that. I mean, God, I mean, how many how many people have you you've heard of that have met people online now? Like, I mean, my mother met her current husband online ages ago, back when it was oh, scary. Back in the day when it back was scary. Back when it was yeah. scary. I remember that. Um, we, we, we had that conversation with her about how scary it is. What, it what like, are you doing? It was like, what? Who yeah. is this guy? <laughs> <laughs> exactly. And I hear that like every so often too, especially. Like, well, we were doing a, a, a class, a Facebook class, and somebody was trying to hook up for eHarmony uh, yeah. a few weeks ago. That was that was that was interesting. Uh, so I, I think this is more open now. I think this is where people go now uh, to meet people. It, it's definitely better than a bar. Because what would you do ten years ago before all this stuff? You know, like I gotta go meet somebody. I'm gonna go to a bar. You know, uh, well, you know, there's not much else out there. 
And the nice thing about it is, too, is that with all of the online stuff that they've got going on, I mean, you, you can have conversations with people over Twitter. And, all right, so I'm, I'm chatting with this person over Twitter for a period of, you know, six months or so. Okay. <laughs> How different are they going to be in real life if you've been talking to them for six months? Mm -hmm. During that six-month span you can check out what they're saying to other people on their Twitter feed. Mm -hmm. So you can see how they're interacting with other people. Mm -hmm. And mm -hmm. can somebody really keep up that facade for six months yeah, on Twitter? I think it, I, I look at it as it kind of strips away any pretense you see by meeting somebody and, you know, having a first I impression by how they look or, you know, or, or something like that or what they're wearing. It really kind of strips all that kind of pretense away when I look at Twitter. I mean, there is, there is, even, there are people that can fake stuff on there. It's but even still. different to the extent that, all right, if I'm, if I'm setting up a dating profile, I answer a basic set of questions. I fill out the profile. My profile get, then gets listed on their site and it's out there for people to read my profile. I can say anything that I want on that profile. And I'm not going to have to, you know, keep coming up with additional content in order to keep that image that people that I'm trying to get people to see. In Twitter, it's a conversation that you're having with people. You know, it's it's different things that you're saying over and over and over again. You know, it's mm -hmm. it's a conversation online, so you you can change certain aspects of it, but it's not like you can change everything. It, it, from the chat room, Mike reminds us that uh, uh, Katie just came up to someone's house who she'd never met before and only talked to on Twitter. Well, uh, we did the same we, thing. Yeah, we, the same thing. we, we the had same somebody thing. from London that came that simply emailed us on the show the first year we were doing the Wrestling mm -hmm. Mayhem show. I, and I love how that opens up. I mean, there's always problems. I met Chris on I mean, Twitter. You, you met your yeah. girlfriend on Twitter. Well, look, I at, mean, look at Mad Mike. I mean, we've we've gone up and stayed with him a couple of different times now. Wrestle fan. Wrestle fan. Wrestle fan visited with with his <laughs> mom and brother. His mom and his brother. Yeah, his mom was his mom was a little freaked out about it. So they made a family trip <laughs> and they stopped along through here. Is that why? Was it? Was she really was a little? iffy about it to i think so forget. and it was relatively on the way to where so, they were going anyway so, so, it, so it did, it, did it help that we took them to go spot furries i don't know if that was a plus or a negative he went back he came back but he was he's of age now so you know um also from the chat <laughs> uh well miss bossy no pants says all of my pittsburgh friends are from twitter and half of my lovers um and uh are they related yeah yeah um, and, and we had one from uh, Juggalo John here. Uh, this is interesting. The Kissinger, uh, the Kiss Messenger, a Loveotics application. Uh, apparently, they're kissing robots. Oh no, there's a video. Oh, this is gonna be great. Oh man. Oh man. <laughs> Oh, there's other music going on. Sorry about that. I think that was Angry Birds. <laughs> so, so we have this this robot here. That looked like there could be from Angry Birds. Is that a bunny? That's no, a pig. And you kiss the pig. And you kiss the other pig. What? So, oh, you're kissing over long distance because the part on the pig apparently resembles the other person kissing. You know, I would so be does the pig slip you some tongue? I would be surprised by this, but um, <laughs> this isn't the this is only thing like it. But what else is like this? What have you seen like this? Do you want me to go into details? Is it uh, PG-13 for the show? Not really. No? <laughs> okay, so there are other applications that we can't really get into right uh, now. Uh, uh, picture a flashlight <laughs> with a USB. <laughs> wow. I'm not kidding. Like, wow. this is a real thing. Like, you, you plug it in, and it's a it's a... Online service, I assume. I haven't looked that much into it, but uh, and apparently it uh, responds to the uh, the video. Riz I don't know how. Riz, wait, wait, wait. Oh, wait, wait. Riz is following up on this. He says the pig vibrates. The pig's lips vibrate, uh, and he says, "Yeah, that's exactly what it is." <laughs> so, um, wow. Yeah, I mean, that's, it's not the first application of this. That's a little disturbing. Like. It helps I, with long distance. Oh, let's see. But would that really help I'm with long distance? I'm going to see if I can find... I mean... No, I'm afraid to look at I, it. I hate to break it to you, Sorg, but, you know, if, if you were shipped overseas for some reason, I would not... That wouldn't even know. It copies the, mouth, the, the movements of the mouth of the other person. Wow. Wow. So who's in charge of it? I can't believe it. Because, I mean, do they both respond... 
I think they were both responding back and forth, like like in sync and everything. And <laughs> but I don't understand why it was like sitting in a cup. I don't, that's a little weird. It's on gadget. Thank God. It's on gadget. Or boing boing. Boing thank, boing. Thank God. Here. <laughs> well, I was. Af- I googled USB USB hoo ha. I didn't use the word hoo ha. Uh, <laughs> oh, it open, rinse, and air dry. <laughs> Interactive sex device syncs porn with belt-driven USB orifice. Yay! That's the headline. Thank you, thank you, Boing Boing. Uh, you uh, see? You just just go so, Google any of that, and you'll find that article on Boing Boing. I think. Yeah. Uh, I, I don't think we can really. Gives, get I, I think right, that, that right. gives new new meaning to Boing Boing, just in general. <laughs> <laughs> just imagine wow. the search term I put in for that. <laughs> I wonder how many. Did people. you really put hoo ha? No, I, I, I put. You're uh, just saying. USB. Or, yeah, USB. Mm hmm. Yes. All right. Uh, and not, like, kiss me. A novel device for kissing communication. Oh, for infants. <laughs> I'm sorry. Kids. Wouldn't kids be freaked out by this thing? Probably. <laughs> I would be. Wow. And teens. I'm sure teens are doing something with that thing. Um, they say it vibrates. Ooh. Um, USB hoo haws. <laughs> <laughs> Not awesome. stick my thing and into the thing in the that meantime, you plug in. <laughs> in the meantime, though, I do know something a little safer for work, and actually, we'll probably lose a lot of time on work. Angry Birds is on Facebook. There it is. Do they have the uh, the the same features that? Google Plus has? Uh, kind of, and then some. Like, you see, there's there's Norm, actually, a guest spot of Norm on the show. Uh, but no, they have scores of other people, and then they have the... What's the uh, stuff on top? This is where it gets interesting. Apparently, these are items. I haven't checked out any of these yet. So you click this one. There's like oh. a bird. It's, and then you go... You can, it's a daily item. Is they do that the, it? Yeah, they do this thing with their games where uh, every so often you'll, you'll get... Uh, special tools. Well, that was a kick-ass score. Like on Wheel of Fortune, uh, okay. you get a free letter. And I or... think you can buy them if you want yeah. more. So they're, they're doing the mini transactions thing. And I just beat Norm's score on that level. What is up? <laughs> what is up? I'm going to go brag to Norm right now. That is Hold hilarious. on. Hold on. It's loading. It's loading. This is going to be a really good moment as this finally loads here. All right, and send requests. I just bragged to you <laughs> on the awesome, sh- awesome cast. You can't even remember the name of the show on the awesome show. I'm, just, I'm just so happy because I'm playing Angry Birds on Facebook. But um, all right, I, move but, it on. So, but but yeah, but it, it's got all this. Those, it further like, goes to prove the 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 comment I made on Twitter yesterday. What's that? Facebook is officially MySpace because it's got Angry Birds. No, because it has the games. The uh, the sparkle graphics, and I saw no less than ten posts on Facebook yesterday of people saying, "I checked out. Who's looking at my page?" And all of it was uh, misspelled. I actually, and I think we did just get a uh, spam on our Wrestling Mayhem show group. Uh, so that's that's not cool. Yeah, it's it's about there. You know what? We can blame MySpace for their comeback. Well, the thing is, is that <laughs> everybody from MySpace realized that MySpace was going down the drain, so they all switched to Facebook. So all of those people that were on MySpace are now on Facebook. So who's coming up with the next big thing that can replace both of them so that we can like move beyond? There you go. There you go. <laughs> well, well, like I said, the, um... <laughs> well, I'm serious. Like I, I'm never on Facebook because whenever mm-hmm. I look on there, it's you know, people talking about stupid shit. It's the updates and stuff from the games. It's mm. all this other stuff, and I'm like, you know, you, know you can turn all those things about. off, right? I do, and, and and I do, and and it's actually kind of usable for me. You 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 have to manage that. You can't just let Facebook go away. You, you know, it, it, unfortunately, MySpace didn't call their their you know thing, you know, and let everything run wild, and that's why everybody left. You know, but uh. Yeah, and even Google Plus is getting a little bit of that too. I understand. Like you're getting a lot of the kind of idiots on there and the spams and everything like that. But um, because it's grown pretty fast, it's definitely not as big as Facebook yet. No, definitely not. But in, in general, it's just one of those things that I think that they're MySpace is trying to not be 
MySpace is trying to be Facebook. Facebook is trying not to be MySpace. No, and I think that they're just kind MySpace, of MySpace. MySpace doesn't even care to be Facebook anymore. Face, uh, MySpace is ready to ride Facebook's coattails. Uh, according to these stories I've been going around like this one here in The Guardian, uh, MySpace has added one million new users in 30 days. Okay. So they opened in India. <laughs> I don't think that's the reason. No? But uh but yeah, they they added one million new users. They were pushing on the music side of things. No, it's just one um, town in India, by the way. I know, I know, I know, I know. Um they they claim that they claim that about four forty thousand people a day Sorry. signed up to MySpace since they introduced new ties to uh Twitter and Facebook. So it, it is complete are you just spilling yourself? <laughs> Not on himself per se. I got I got my phone, my pants. And a drop on your iPad case. No! Wait, wait. there's this perfect circle of uh, uh, of my soda around your iPad case, except for the corner. Like, none of it got on your iPad. It all, like, deflected from your iPad onto me. <laughs> so, you're welcome. I took a hit for your iPad. Anyways, uh, MySpace. I saved you. <laughs> <laughs> so well, well myspace is big in place we talked about a couple weeks ago they're going to do myspace tv i know i've started getting random notifications about the office and saturday night I live in house saying hey we got a new video up so i guess I, they're a big entertainment hub now and apparently people are coming back to them it's about time it's about time that they did something right that they did something right mm -hmm. right mm -hmm. <laughs> so but i mean they're not going to be the the uh you know the source, you know, like Facebook has become, no. which because really that's what they used to be. That's where we used to go to interact. We used to. I can't wait until they put in there and... Angry Birds on LinkedIn. <laughs> they might as well at this point, right? Just where I we're mean, going? I can't believe it took so long for Facebook. Oh, yeah. What is LinkedIn anyway? It's a resume site. No, I, I realize what LinkedIn is, but does anybody really use yeah, LinkedIn? Lots of people use it. Lots of people get jobs off of LinkedIn. It's a legitimate site. Yeah. Yeah. I don't know, because I was having this debate with uh, some of the girls that I work with in the office. And, like, they were trying to push uh, last year for, oh, my God, we're on LinkedIn. You have to be in LinkedIn. I'm on LinkedIn. Don't get me wrong. And I've used it for, for different things as far as, like, PodCamp and different things like that. But for an average person user, mm -hmm. what do you use LinkedIn for? If you're happy with your job and not really. Exactly. Uh, don't need, if, need if you're not, a, if you're not looking in front of the anybody. job, if you're not hiring anybody. If you're just an average Joe person, what do you use LinkedIn for? I mean, you don't I, I don't I have a LinkedIn page, mm -hmm. but that's just an empty account. Mm -hmm. Like I've never, you never filled it out or anything. Never filled it out. I can't, can I go and recommend you for stuff? I get emails all the time. Yeah, yeah. I mean, it's you should be this person's friend on LinkedIn, and I'm like. I don't remember my password. See, I, I have a lot of people. <laughs> <laughs> just like my my just like my MySpace. No, my, um, I closed my MySpace account. I didn't close mine. I did. I've always been kind of. You know, I took well, I I've took been, the guilt oh, wait, trip. Yeah, that's right. Yeah. I yeah. took the guilt bad. trip. That's right. Yes. I felt bad, but it's closed. Uh, I felt bad. Yeah, I, I I always like our old music stuff there, just in case it becomes a music hub again, which maybe it is. Maybe uh, this comes up and our our music we did in two thousand seven becomes discovered. And Chris says that she's not happy with her job, but doesn't use LinkedIn. Well, I, yeah, it, it, I I fill it out. I did the whole it's, thing. It's more of just a reputation thing. Like another, it's, one it's, of those... it's, it's another. It's like from my personal SEO on on Google. It comes up because LinkedIn. You know, if you're on LinkedIn, it's one of the first things that comes up, right? And that's the thing is that when I'm when I'm searching for myself, if somebody tells me, "Hey, you know, I, I was checking you out for some stuff." I pull it up, and my LinkedIn stuff is m mentioned in there. Um, mm -hmm. My Facebook, I believe, might be somewhere you know further down. Uh, you know, there's other things that come up first and foremost, but the LinkedIn is in there. I'm like, why? Why I don't I don't use it? Just like Chachi said, uh, with exception to PodCamp, I don't use my Facebook. Yeah, yeah. Or I'm sorry, <laughs> I don't use my LinkedIn. Yeah, yeah. I, I don't use Facebook very much either anymore. But yeah, for the LinkedIn. I, I really don't know how to use it. Yeah, I, um, getting in interactions. I mean, I, I really think you need to go in there and uh, look at the groups, but the groups just seem full of crap most of the time too, like the, the message boards and everything. Um, I don't know. If it's just because of the ones I'm looking at, because I'm. Uh, well, but but 
it, it, maybe it's you need to find the right community. Supposedly, a lot of the bigger companies use it to communicate with each other, like as Facebook for them. Uh, maybe we're just not on that level that it makes sense for us. No, you know, no. The way I see LinkedIn as an is as an extended resume. Yeah, like yeah. if you want a super long resume, because we all know there's rules to resumes and. People expect yes. certain things. There's a mm -hmm. difference between so, a resume and a curriculum vitae. Yeah, and LinkedIn mm -hmm. is that place where you put all that random stuff that yeah. you do, and people could hire you hire you for. Yeah, but it's not going to make your normal resume. So you leave it out there in case somebody comes across and say, "Hey, you're the perfect person from this. Leave your job." Yes. So so you just kind of leave that that line out there just in case. Um, yeah, I we're we're dealing with it um, because uh, the. <laughs> You ever you ever deal with the Facebook or the LinkedIn companies stuff on there? Yes. Have you? Ever, I know you you work for a bigger. You both work for bigger companies than I have. Uh, but my one client uh, said, "Hey, let's clean this up." And I was like, "You realize this says that about a hundred people work for you, and it's a pretty small practice." And that was one of the but things. But it's all spams. Well, and that it, was part of the problem. And how with, do I get rid of them? Well, the next question that one of the big things that my company was dealing with was we have past employees. Mm -hmm. that have gone on to other firms mm -hmm. and we no longer want to have them necessarily associated with our with our stuff and it seems and explaining like to them it was like they put it on there essentially it's an online resume yeah so the only way that we would be able to essentially take them off of the current thing is to tell them to update that's their profile that's what i'm looking at too that's what i'm looking at too because I, I look it up there and well the owner is the owner is uh of course pakistani Mm -hmm. And I think that's one of the reasons, uh, because some of the names of, of some of the doctors and everything are, are from that region. Uh, we have a lot of random things that don't even look like they're people that say it's from India, says it's from Pakistan, says it's from this and that and the other thing. And it's just like, and, and I showed them, I'm like, are any of these people that have worked for you? It's like, no. And I go, I got access to the page and you can't get rid of anybody. No. Absolutely cannot get rid of it. I have to message all these people and say, please remove us. And that but was the problem that we were having. It's so weird. Uh, and so how does this become a representation? LinkedIn, I, I, I you know, somebody needs a, I, I don't understand what LinkedIn is working with, you know. Um, I understand, like, you know, making connections. And if, if you want to get into a company and say, hey, you kind of know those people. And to manage to manage your kind of uh, your, your Kevin Bacon degrees uh, with well, important people Kevin is Bacon interesting. Kevin Bacon degrees is interesting. I mean, it is interesting. And that's what they build on. But, um, and I know that that's actually one of the things, again, that, that my company was really happy about was that we could look at our LinkedIn friends. As a law firm. As, as, as a law firm. So people know what kind of, what kind of company we're we We would about. look at our LinkedIn friends and see what friends they had. Mm -hmm. in order to market mm -hmm. and it makes sense in that in that type of capacity but other than that like i said for for the average joe blow person on the street it just doesn't make sense speaking of making sense i'm gonna take this one all right you ready okay. for this okay this is the part where if we have any female listeners <clears throat> other than uh <clears throat> the three that i'm aware of <clears throat> <clears throat> yes, I know. I said the three that I I'm aware of. Three. Oh, okay. And you're only listening because you're here. Yes. Say, you, you said listeners, and I'm like, I'm on the show. Hello. Bravo, Sony. Bravo. Well done. What? I what? applaud you. This is now? me. This is me applauding Sony for being smart. Okay. You want to know why? What they do now? Because 30 minutes after Whitney Houston died, that's right, she died uh, this weekend. Yes, yes. 30 minutes after she died. They hiked the prices on her albums. Do you want to know why? Because her dying reminded everyone what a wonderful musician she was and prompted them to go out and buy their albums. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. At first, people, Bravo. At first, people were blaming iTunes because that's where they saw the price hike. That's where the majority saw the price hike. Also, Amazon as well. But actually, it was Sony Music uh, who, who hiked the price... Of the wholesale. Well done. Of the wholesale yep. price. Sin hence, automatically hiking the price on the services. Well done. Yeah, that's a little cold. So why did you have to apologize to, to the female constituency? Because they're the ones most likely to be offended by it. Because yeah. Bunny Houston, they're yeah. Chris Brown. I think that's where he was going with that. Uh, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. all right. So, yeah, and, and, and there was the, the other bit. Uh, uh, apparently, the first report uh, a first confirmed report, I guess, was like the uh, 
niece or something of like the maid or whatever that that found Whitney Houston tweeted it before anything else. And of course, you know, you saw it before you saw the official report on uh, CNN or anything. I like usually that. wait for TMZ. So you wait for TMZ. Yeah, TMZ was TMZ uh, is your source. <laughs> yeah, pretty much. I yeah. usually wait for TMZ. <laughs> Like, I, I'll see it on Twitter or something, and I'll be like, all right, where's TMZ? Oh, Whoa, no. we just lost our video. Oh, no. He'll be back in a second. Don't worry about what that, do folks. We do? There there it is. Is. I don't know what happened there. That was a new one. But yeah, uh, but, but yeah I it, applaud it was, them. You applaud them? It's a smart move. <laughs> it's, they knew they were going to get a lot of album sales. Yeah. Smart move. Exactly. Uh, well, you know, when you can change things like that so quickly... You know, why not drop it? And it says it jumped up. The jump was more than 60%. Yeah, uh, albums went wow. from five bucks to eight bucks. Uh, that that was uh, in pounds. Uh, we were on a uh, oh, <laughs> we're, we're on a European site. Okay. But no, so, it, it, it jumped from like something like so five pounds five, to something about eight. six bucks to 12 bucks here in the States, like or seven ninety nine to 12 bucks or, or something like that. Uh, whatever those prices uh, work out to be. I was here on the other day. So. Oh, uh, boy. Well, maybe that's the reason why Warner Brothers uh, is claiming that Spotify is an incremental positive to the label's bottom line. I'm just happy with digital sales. Warner Brothers uh, uh, seeing increase, increases from Spotify and iTunes. Well, of course they do. Well, it, it, yeah, it was like like everybody was telling them, right? Yeah. Uh, and, and, and Spotify is also the interesting thing, because I know, like, I, I listened to a thing, I think, by Jonathan Colton, where he said, he's like, yeah, I have it on there, but it really doesn't get much, because you get, like, 0. .0000 pennies per play. So it, it takes a lot to get through for you to even, you know, be, be amount to much of anything. Um, I think there was a story today, actually, uh, that TuneCore sent, sent out about $10,000 in royalty checks. So I was like, like, yeah, that's a lot of $4 checks for people out there. Um, hey, you know, I, I got a CD baby check from the album we put out in 2007 the other day. All digital sales. I don't think we're on Spotify. I'll see if the, the CD baby does that. But Wait, still, most of it's streaming. CD baby's still... Exists? Yeah, CD baby's still around. It's one of those things How you go to... Check? I don't know, like thirty bucks. Wow! I'll, like once a year, I'll get a check for about thirty dollars. Huh? Then off of that, off of that album, and that's uh, and people, people are finding it and streaming it. Do I don't I know where. I tried to see, I tried to see in Pandora, and uh, it doesn't come up in Pandora. I, I don't know what all the services were on. I just, I just kind of clicked that, put it on all the digital. Why not? We're, we were on Napster because a lot of times they come up and say, "Hey, you just got a few pennies from Napster." I'm just like, cool. Huh. Thanks, Sean Parker. <laughs> <laughs> it's not him anymore. I know. I know. Thanks for selling that to other people yeah. to give me money, you know. Um, but it, I don't know. It's interesting. It's a. Uh, oh, the. Uh, <laughs> oh, the iTunes match was the one that they were talking about today. That was like the ten thousand uh, dollars via TuneCore uh, because that finally came out, and that was a bunch of people that they, they all just got paid for music that supposedly was it was either ripped from a CD or stolen. Right. So that's that paying off at least in some bit. Yes. So so good job, uh, music company. You're making Stop more money. The so, presses. What's up? You got so breaking news. Load. I do. Okay. Wait for it to load. We stopped the presses for you. I know, and it, you were faster. Actually, it's breaking news from uh, the tenth. Replica portal portal gun goes up for pre order in Japan. <laughs> oh, I'm not kidding. Look, and you uh, can't see because it's a little it, too bright. But yeah, but it it, like it is like a uh, a replica. Hit the tweet button. Oh, here, take it. It's like it's a replica portal gun. Like yeah, it, it lights up and everything and. No, nope, doesn't work there. Either. Doesn't yeah. work there. A lot of white going on here. But, but uh, anyways, go ahead. Yeah, it says that. Uh, let's see if I remember this right. Um, about three hundred dollars, I think, is what the article says. But full size lights up blue and orange. It doesn't actually make portals, so uh, you know, it's around two hundred dollars. So <laughs> if it doesn't make portals what does it do it then what's up. the point yeah it lights up uh it's uh being released by NECA and uh it features both blue and orange and it's going for around $200 it's it's it'll be out in April that looks nice that yeah. looks nice here 
There it is. I finally got it up there. There you go. Yeah, did you hear what Mattel was also putting out this week? The Back to the Future hoverboard. Really? Yeah. Really? Yeah, I'll pull it up here. Oh, they said they really, they they unveiled it at the uh, toy fair this week. Is that the the one that? Yeah, that's the one that uh, Mr. our friend Mr. Joe, Mr. Joe Waz of the Toonsium was going to. Joe Woz. 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 I'm sorry. Of the Toonsium was going to. Yeah. Uh, yeah, the hoverboards are going to be released in Christmas of uh, this year. Uh, they don't have any pictures. They're just a picture of Marty and. But I, I saw him on another site though. Uh, not actually hovering. <laughs> Aw, then that does, that's not cool. I don't know what it's supposed to do, but apparently it doesn't, it doesn't actually hover on its own. Well, did you Thanks, see the, Mattel. the Christmas tree photo that was attached to the, uh, the link? Uh, I've, seen someone's... The Christmas, I've, I've seen the Christmas tree photo. <laughs> so, so but, it's uh, actually Christmas. Well, there's, there's someone's... a hoverboard. Is yeah, it... I guess it was by Mattel in the, in the movie, wheels. too. Is that what it does? Uh, I think this is a, I think this is a, uh, the display a display of it, so... But uh, they decided to cash in on it uh, since it's almost 2015, guys. And there's your hoverboard. So uh, I think this is more. Is it more of a model? Yeah. Movie accurate. Glide over most services. <laughs> it probably has wheels. Aww. <laughs> and certainly not over water. But is no, a... not over water. Nope. Well, in order to uh, even release it, the article said that Mattel has to get enough pre-orders, or they're not even going to bother doing it. Wow. Which means it costs a lot to make. Wow. Oh, we have got some uh, from Twitter. Bio, bio sells Jen uh, on the Twitters. Our friend Jen. Uh, so she uses LinkedIn for networking. So, and that kind of goes to the, the kind of the degrees thing that we talked about. Yeah. You know? So, you know, that's uh, a and nice, safe place to do that. So Back to Mattel. Back to Mattel. Uh, they're releasing add-ons. It's, they're called Activity. Yes, they are. Yes, they are. This, these are interesting. iPad toys. So, yeah, iPad toys. So, so apparently these things, they'll come in their box. And, like, there's a Fruit Ninja one here, uh, <laughs> if you guys are on the video. So you got your little Fruit Ninja character. And then it links with, and I think I think it gives you a code or something for the game along with it. And uh, and you get to play Fruit Ninja with your little guy. I guess there's some pictures here of it. Yeah. So there's your... It unlocks a new mode. Okay, okay. So uh, this looks like it's a uh, two-player Fruit Ninja Yeah. going on here. And there's your little guy. Yeah, or and one person pushes fruit to the other person. And it, it interacts with your iPad. It, it, there's little sensors on there that it will detect. Yeah. Um, looks like we have an Angry, Bo- Angry Birds version here. Yeah, so. where you control the pigs. Really? And not the birds. Interesting. That's interesting. It, well, it, basically, what they're doing is it unlocks a new mode. Is okay. that cut on the, the rope? Game. I see. Yeah, that is cut the rope, and you get your little nom. But yeah, it, it uh, in the Fruit Ninja one from the looks of it, and yeah, those are WWE ones. Nice. I'm guessing oh, for the uh, for the wrestler game, but I don't nice. know. It might be its own game. You never know because it just says WWE Rumblers. It doesn't say any, any uh, kind of game. But okay. um, there yeah. you go. The Barbie, Barbie? princesses. And what is this monster? Monster hish hush. But uh, what like the, what they're doing is they're actually starting with a uh, a Hot Wheels one, which comes out in May. Oh, there's a Hot Wheels there. Yeah, and I see the sensors on the bottom as soon as it loads here. Uh, it's kind of cool. It's kind of a cool uh, alternate w- way for the, the for the toy industry to get involved right. with this. So uh, Activity. that's kind of cool. That's kind of cool. Activity. You think you're going to be picking some of those? I'll have to pick up some of the wrestlers. Activity. Did they have a price on this? Uh, the Hot Wheels one is released in May 1999. Well, that's actually not too bad in comparison. No, it isn't. And it's one of those nice things that kids love to play with the iPads. Mm-hmm. And it's something that you can actually play with your kids on the iPad. Mm-hmm. I think mm-hmm. that's kind of a cool mm-hmm. way of going about it. And all of us are already <laughs> playing like Angry our Angry Birds and our Cut the Ropes and, and uh, Fruit Ninjas are going to be like, oh, that's that's kind of, let's let's do that. Because I kind of want to get the Angry Birds one too, you know? Right yeah, I was, I, mean, <laughs> I was smiling when, when you pulled up that on the on the screen. I was oh, like, oh, I didn't bring it down Angry here. Birds. I mean, how bad has it gotten? I mean, it just opened up on Facebook, of course. We're playing the same levels. They do have some exclusive levels, but we are playing the same levels again to see if we can beat our friends like we were on Google Plus, but none of our friends were there yet. Um, and you just beat Norm. 
and I just beat Norm on the air right here uh, <laughs> on the show. And uh, I, I walked into Rite Aid to grab some, grab our Valentine's candy, and uh, walked in. There's a display of uh, Angry Birds gummy candy. And uh, yeah, that got bought right away. Um, so we're completely into it. I mean, it, it's it, it it works. This coming from the guy guys, who just watched Rio this weekend. I did just watch Rio this weekend. <laughs> I agree with Norm. They could have they could have thrown an Angry Bird in there, really. So um, it really didn't hold up on its own. I mean, it's just because I was so freaking tired. <laughs> but other than that, um, all right, Path. You guys, have you, you guys aren't using Path, right? Is nope. It, it's I signed up, and it's iOS up? only. It's what? It was, iOS only? Yeah, it was iOS Missy, only. you haven't used any of it, right? Uh, iOS only? Someone someone invited me to Path when it first came out, and I signed up. And after I signed up, I said... And you realized you needed an iPhone. Yeah, I said, <laughs> oh. So, uh, for those who don't know, crap. Path is like... I mean, it's pretty much like a, a Facebook. It's like a uh, slash Foursquare slash, you know, any of these other kind of location and check in apps. Uh, but it's it, it limits you what to 150 people, I think it is. So what, what they say, like, you know, you don't you don't friend anybody on here. You wouldn't invite to a dinner party. So it's more of a privatized thing. You're not you're not showing everything to the whole world. Well, basically, uh, in the past week, they uh, it was discovered that when you sign up for it, you know, they do the hey, hey, look who's on path. And you're like, oh, I didn't know I had that friend on Facebook, but it was maybe in your contacts or something. Apparently, they're uploading your entire contact list from your phone to their servers. Oh. Yeah. That's not cool. That's nice. But I don't think they're the only ones that do this, but uh, they got caught or people made a big stink over it. However you want to look at it. And... um, and uh, and they they deleted the user con- uh, data from their servers and outright apologized um, with a full on uh, post uh, saying we're sorry and outlines the company's focus on the security and um, which it takes very very seriously. Yes, yes. So um, many were saying that this was like one of the most kind of outwardly apologetic uh, responses from a company like this. Uh, as far as an app so you know good on them for that and coming right out and clean and say we're going to take care of this you know they didn't try to brush it under the rug (laughs) i mean i mean mean, let's let's look what happened at that uh what was that uh cell the cell phone thing the uh oh the carrier iq carry iq i mean look at that whole carry iq thing yeah you know granted that's a little bit bigger but um yeah, uh, yeah. But I, don't so, think this, I really don't think this is the only app that does this because no, I feel like doesn't. a lot of other ones like look at well, your contact list and, and there has to be some kind of exchange going anytime on anytime that you load up like when I loaded up Facebook when I load up Twitter even when we were walking people through uh, the setup at the uh, at the library for at the, the library thing, thing yeah. it asks you do you want to connect through your email do you want to find people that you know that are already on these services so how many of those services are actually doing that it's, it's kind of they're, frightening they're connecting and they're looking at your contacts and i, and I think i made a point and, and and some people when i say that i say yeah you're signing in and giving them permission to look like everybody in your email and one person like looked at and saw the people that came up and of course it's your entire contact list mm-hmm. i know for 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 me for gmail it, it if i email the person they're in my contact list yeah so everybody's in my contact list and you know everybody that i've 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 interacted with even if it's just an incoming you know um i mean that that's kind of scary that that gets all the way out there and and you never know so but uh but still i i still don't get path i don't i don't need another thing to check in on i know a lot of people uh friends of ours are checking it out because it is a really nice app it's a really spiffy little app are you on did you get on pinterest yet I am on Pinterest. I played with it. I signed in and a bunch of people are following me now. Yeah, I've yeah, got I, an, still... a ton of follows. Have you uh, have you poked around in it any? I actually, that was one of the things I was doing during Chachi Plays when I when we had some, some <laughs> slow time. Uh, is I was going through Pinterest and I was just double checking, seeing what everything was. Actually, that's when I officially set up the account on my phone. Uh, you had. I haven't checked it out on my phone yet. I went through the site. Yeah, I didn't go through. I haven't actually gone through the site yet. I went through my phone. And I was looking through it, and I actually pinned a couple of things. I was so excited about that. Um, but, yeah, there's a ton of people that I've gotten emails from that they're following me. <laughs> and it's people that I know, thankfully. But, yeah, yeah. yeah, for the most part, yeah. <laughs> I, I spent a solid week on Pinterest. Oh, yeah. And 
honestly, I only go back now to see what Chris pins for me. So that's kind of like your yeah, list I, of I, pin things back and forth to, I, to uh, each other. I invited her, and then she uh, would go through and find stuff that she thought I'd like, and she has a section for me that I go and check out regularly. Yeah, I'm so. actually kind of interested with all of the baked good stuff. That's what people have been telling me, is that every time they turn around, they're seeing like Ooh. cupcakes and cookies and stuff on there. Popcorn macaroons with salted caramel. I, what? Who is this? I don't even know who this is that's posting this stuff. Apparently, it went and added everybody... That I'm connected with on uh, on uh, Facebook. Well, I know that mine, when I set mine up, like, they asked me what my interests were. So based on my interests... I skipped that, I think. They brought well, in a bunch... Well, then you get everything Pinterest has to offer. Everything. <laughs> <laughs> exactly, Sorg. Um, it says... They said you don't... But yeah, they, they went ahead and they... Based on what interests that I marked that I wanted, they loaded me a bunch of stuff. And I actually, I thought that they had a lot of it pretty on par with, with some mm. of my interests. No, I'm getting, um, wow. I just got a hodgepodge of everything. Um, I know, I know. Well, I follow the, I'm following the, the, the rabbit girls, the, the pinup stuff because of uh, Veronica's contest was on mm -hmm. there. So apparently I just posted a bunch. So I went in and it was all like pinups. I'm like, well, this is interesting. <laughs> <laughs> so, uh, and now it's like, and now it's like, you know, like you said, it's kind of random stuff. I'm seeing some architecture. I'm seeing some, mm -hmm. somebody apparently is uh, interested in blue hair and uh, nails mm -hmm. going on here. Uh, there's some video game stuff. It's it just a nice, interesting variety. I don't know yeah. what I'm going to do with it, though. Um, Ch Chachi's but. pulling up over here his, his for Chachi page that, that Chris is giving him. And this is actually some kind of cool stuff. <laughs> yeah, I mean... Uh, <laughs> Is this like a wish list that she's putting up? No, or? it's just no, stuff, it's just that, stuff I would, that she thinks you'd be interested in. Like, uh, there's a there's a a picture of Ryan Reynolds with a button down shirt open, so you can see his abs and everything. It says "Man Crush." <laughs> um, a couple pictures of orangutans. There, there's a couple of cool tattoos um, on there. Some Batman stuff, like here. Um, let's see if it'll load it. Can I see your Pinterest somehow in this? Yeah. Uh, if you go to Pinterest.com backslash the username. But, I mean, this is one of the things. It's a uh, Batman it's a, ceiling it's a, fan. A Batman ceiling fan, yeah. yeah. <laughs> oh, that's awesome. Yeah, it's uh, little bat wings. Bat wings. Yeah. Then there is then uh, the Contra Code tattoo that someone has. Mm-hmm. Because you with your uh, awesome video game tattoos, yeah. So I, so that so so it is really kind of and it's visual. I know somebody I was I was listening to something and they were like, yeah, I jumped in Pinterest and I started like I started pinning articles that I was into, but that's not why you do it. No, it's, it is. It's it is for, more it's visual. visual. It's like it's like uh, you saw a picture of the portal guns and you pinned that. You saw right. that picture of the uh, of the uh, uh, Christmas tree through the portals. You pinned that. Um, you know, more like, hey, check out the screenshot of this video game, maybe. So I'm seeing a little bit of it, like Mass oh, Effect 3. It looked like it was going on in here. Um, so yeah, it, it's that whole visual thing. Um, it, it's interesting, and and, 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 and also interesting because it's it's the majority of women on that sh on that site too. So, what <laughs> what's going on over there? <laughs> it's a it's a picture. It says uh, it says dress for the job you want, not yeah. the one you have. And it has a, it's, it's a, a conference room table, and the one dude is dressed, dressed like Batman. Batman. Oh, okay, okay, yeah. <laughs> all right. But, uh, yeah. That is awesome. Awesome. Um, and my Pinterest crashed. That's interesting. Yeah, Chachi's just did too. <laughs> hey, yeah, I got I one more. I got but... another video game story for you, Chachi. Have you been watching? Uh, we talked about. I, I think we, we we were talking briefly about the memory cards or something before but uh the ps vita is coming out <coughs> here shortly um and she just added something what is that she just added Trish something just added something yeah to the pinterest <laughs> page um it's a superhero cake nice i don't know show you uh, I that for your birthday. so P that? ps vita is coming out and uh, they, they announced a lot of the pricing for the bundles, and it's apparently going to be pretty. <laughs> that's pretty awesome. <laughs> um, yeah, it's completely visual, but that is awesome. But uh, the I would replace some of the layers. <laughs> the pricing is coming out for this. Of course, the PS Vita, the, the, the three hundred fifty dollar first edition bundle that they're starting with, is going to have. She a flat out said that maybe you could make that. <laughs> <laughs> they're still on the cakes. Yeah. Sorry. Hey. Um, 
It's going to be a 3G Wi Fi model in the home. case, a copy of Little Deviance, and a 4 gigabyte memory card. Listen, which apparently, what? what? I've already applauded Sony once today. Yes. They're not getting another one. You don't me. want another one? No. Have you have you looked into what Vita's going to be doing? No. It, we're going to be doing physical and digital games. Obviously. Okay. Because that's where of, people are going now. Of the same games. Yeah. Though. So you can get it either way for the most part. And actually it looks like they're going to be, a. Uh, they say in this article uh, here on uh, Touch Arcade, that's going to be a hair cheaper uh, for the digital versions of them. Um, they are going to do, <laughs> they, they say they're say, staying limber by allowing $5 or $10 or even $30 games to hit the PSN store. And, you know, not the 99 cent titles we're getting used to with the iPhones. Um, but it's, it's interesting. Um, I'm still losing them on Pinterest as a bad oh, idea. Oh yeah. Cool. That's like, that stories on the, on the end of the show. Um, that is a landslide. You, you start Pinterest <laughs> and people go to Pinterest. You're done. I've, I've, I've not figured this out then. I'm going to have to get lost in the middle of me. You're not, apparently. you're not looking at the right things though. Apparently I'm not. Um, <laughs> no, seriously. If you can't find something that you're entertained by on Pinterest, you're doing it wrong. I'm holding it wrong. You're you're holding it wrong. You're okay. done. Give up the internet. <laughs> seriously. <laughs> All right, I'll have to play with it then. And I just don't want to get into another thing. It's like I don't want to check in and then yet another thing with Path. You know, it's a. But this is completely but different this, than this, something this that you're is already something doing. Different. This is people like, are going out on the internet and finding things that you're interested in, interested in. Mm -hmm. You don't have to go find it yourself. Because if you fill out the profile, it'll probably already be in your list of things you like. Okay. Okay. So you pin it to your board, and it reaches another person. Because people that you follow will see that you pinned it, and it just brings information forward faster. And Visual. The, visual information. And this is the best explanation of Pinterest I've had so far. I gotta tell you. But, I mean, you don't have to search for things anymore. Mm -hmm. No, and people like, find it and they share it, and it's there, and it's pinned, and it's for you, and it's awesome. Right. Like, seriously, I have I have one, uh, two, three, four pictures on Pinterest that were pinned for me that I could turn around and use on uh, my Tumblr. Mm -hmm. There you go. Do you know how much time that saves me? Mm -hmm. I don't have to do anything. No searching. Copy the picture, throw it on Tumblr, add some tags. There's a post for Tumblr. Nice. Nice. Which is megiggle.tumblr.com. Yeah. Right. So, I mean, everything's brought to you now. All you have to do is repin it so your friends can see it. It's the internet for the lazy. Or for the busy. Yeah. Internet for the busy. I mean, Chachi just spent a lot of time doing his video game thing, and this makes it a lot easier. I mean, we all have nine to five jobs. Mm -hmm. A lot of us have families. A lot of us have responsibilities outside of, you know, whatever the norm is. I know that myself, between work, home, any other side projects that I pick up, I don't have a whole lot of time to be searching for stuff. Mm -hmm. With Pinterest, I might actually start blogging again. It's all there. You don't have to look for anything. Yep. Nice. You just sold me on Pinterest. You can't find it on Pinterest. You're holding it wrong. We just sold them on Pinterest. <laughs> Great. There goes a lot of my time. So we you. record live Tuesdays at 7 p.m. You can catch us at live.sorgatronmedia.com. We're also on Twitter at AwesomeCast. Are you going to bring up the thing? Is no, that what you're doing? No. no. Uh, you can email us. We like to hear from our fans. No, it's awesomecast at sorgatronmedia.com. Or contact at awesomecast.com. That's all what this says. I know, I gotta fix that. Contact at awesomecast.com. You can call us. You can't call us? No, you can't call us. Oh, did you not renew the number? Uh, did we lose the number? No, yeah, we lost the number. Oh. <laughs> well, have it reset up, I'm sure, sometime, perhaps, well, maybe. You can go to awesomecast.com and email us. Who and uses Twitter a phone us? anymore? There's yeah, so much right. stuff to that's do. Right. Oh, that's right. You can all send emails. You can send yes. video mails. You can do whatever you want. You can right. send it to that email address. I, mean, I, I, love, I would awesome love to get. Com. I would love to get like video voicemails. Just like put yourself in front of a webcam. Talk to us. Put it on YouTube. Send us the link. We'll use it. That's how we do segments on the Mayhem Show. Yes. 
Actually, we're yeah. also we're available on iTunes, Roku, Blip TV, YouTube. Where's the other list? That's all of it. Stitcher. I forgot Stitcher. Where you at? Oh, I'm at the couch. I'm on the couch. No, no, no. I'm mean, <laughs> on the internet. Oh, uh, uh, you can you can find me on Twitter at Chachi Says. I'm at Chachi Says dot net and wrapping up ChachiPlace dot com. Excellent, Missy. Where are you <laughs> on the internet? <laughs> on the internet, um, I I I am at Rebellious Flaw on Twitter. Mm-hmm. I am also at PGH Cafe Solstice on Twitter. Mm-hmm. And uh, other than that, I I have a WordPress blog that mm-hmm. escapes me what the actual address isn't it, is. <laughs> isn't it just Rebellious Flaw on dot WordPress dot com? Probably. <laughs> I, I don't know. What was the name of it so I can search it? My not so warm and fuzzy thoughts. That works. There you go. And of course, you can check out everything that we're doing here at sorgatronmedia.com. Uh, I blog over at sorgatron.com from time to time. Um, and uh, oh, we got a little episode of Unsung with some footage from Chachi Plays. There's already the full 24 hours time lapse over at chachiplays.com. <laughs> we're going to have a lot of those interviews and stuff. Yeah. Uh, edited down or not edited down and uh, posted throughout the network here in the next few days. Also look for Evening with PodCamp with our friends from last week, uh, Monster Team Monster Haiku. And hey, check out monsterhaiku.org and go uh, get your book. It helps out the Monster Dimes. Thank you, guys. Thank you to our, our great chat room in here. You've been an awesome audience. Have an awesome week. We're